Okay, now we're going to look at an important aspect of your training. And before you learn any movements, you must learn the fundamentals of concepts and principles which give rise to those movements. And keep in mind that there are no techniques in proper traditional Chinese white crane fist or Bai Hu Chin. Okay? There are movements based on the principles, the concepts and the energy of the art. To say that there are techniques is to limit the art and say that this is only the one way we can do it and that there is no other way forward and that the techniques themselves are self-limiting. Whereas concepts and principles of movement is eternal. It's, movement is everywhere. You can move in so many ways with your body and generate power in so many ways with your body from those movement concepts and principles. So what we're going to look at here now is a number of special exercises designed to embody your body with that principle of movement essence, movement concepts, movement principles. Okay? Very, very important. These particular uh, movements come to us, or exercises I should say, come to us from a chap called Hong Jingzhang, who was a Chen style Tai Chi teacher and a white crane teacher. Now, Master Hong Jingzhang was mainly a white crane stylist of the Ming Perchen, or the calling crane style, and in the main was taught by two main teachers, Zhu Zhongzhang and Chen Shiding. Now, having said that, he discovered the art of Chen Nanjing Tai Chi Chuan, Tai Chi Chen. And um, from there he decided that, for whatever reasons of his own, that the Tai Chi Chen was much more advanced to him in its concepts and principles and movements than that of his white crane fist. So he put his mind and his body and his energy and his spirit into the study of the Tai Chi. Now, that went on for some many, many, many moons and then he later returned back to his white crane fist training as he felt that it was wrong of him not to also propagate or promote that system because of the very many different uh, methods and uh, greatness that that art contained within itself. Now these movements, he created five movements and they're called the five loosening exercises of uh, Master Hong Shun Chun, but we have expanded beyond that to include another three or four different movements so that we can get the, much more of the overall body developed and looked at. And these movements are done after you've done your three circle standing pose qigong, then you do these movements. And then we go into whatever you're going to train for that particular session, be it technique, which we don't do, movements, be it forms, be it applications, partner drills, whatever it may be, okay? So I'm going to quickly just give you a walkthrough of these uh, particular exercises and later on you can have a look at what they actually mean uh, and why I say that is the way they work upon the body and what they achieve through those various movements but also what each of those movements has to do within an application based sense. Because everything, every single thing you do in traditional Chinese white cone fist has a rhyme and reason, okay? Has its own song, its own poetic principles behind it, which drives it forward, but it also has its own application of your path, which is very important. Nothing is wasted. No movement is wasted. There are no, you know, pretty movements just added for the sake of 
beautifying something or making it look good so it's more marketable to sell to others. No. Every single movement we do in White Crane Fist has a real world meaning. Some other aspects, um, when you do certain parts of the etiquette, also have a philosophical meaning or a concept reminding type meaning. But we'll look at those in other videos as we go along. Okay, the first exercise is the arms side to side. Now you don't have to take up a big stance. You can take up a big stance if you want to get more movement principle, but it's entirely up to you and your own body type and your own creativity, personality, those sort of other things that always creep in regardless of whether you're aware of them or not. So this exercise is basically the arms are relaxed, the body's relaxed, and you go from side to side, swinging the arms like so. Now this is a basic way of doing this particular exercise. You can see the arms go long to about shoulder height, and knees are bent. I've got that sort of up and down swinging action happening as well. Then you can take it into a tighter form, bring it in front of your body like so. And the hands are still relaxed, elbows relaxed, shoulders relaxed, hips relaxed, knees relaxed, ankles relaxed. Okay? Like so. Then if you want, you can start bringing about a more internal concept into this exercise, which is like, so the body actually gets down and you can see how I'm moving my body more into the lower extremities. Like so. Now I'd probably suggest that you do each of these particular exercises five times each rep. So you do five times of this exercise, five times the next one, five times the next one and so on. The next exercise we call Lion Rotates the Ball. And uh, it can be done in a number of ways. The first one is, is just take up again your loose stance and the arms just roll in front of your body like this, forward and back, like this, or you can go the other way. In some ways it's similar to the uh, white cloud or the um, arms like clouds of the Tai Chi form, or wave hands like clouds of the Tai Chi form, and so forth. And again, you can see it's loosening up the upper body a lot of emphasis on loosening the hands, keeping them nice and relaxed. Now we start to get into a more chi aspect, so then it becomes down, and you can see my whole body is getting involved in the motion now, and it's much more fluid. Okay, that's it. But there is another aspect of doing this, and I'll show you now. Then I'll, I'll grab some tools and show you another aspect that you can also use to practice this, this and a lot of the other techniques or not techniques I should say because we have no techniques a lot of the other movements that we do so from here this one's going to be a little bit different don't imagine you've got a ball in front of you and you're rolling your hands around it so it's going to be like this rolling the ball rolling the ball and you can see my whole upper body is engaged in this action, now you can start, if you want, you can start bringing it into your lower body as well. And you can make the movements large or very small. Okay, and again, you would do five of those as a uh, repetitive set. Okay, just continuing on with that lion rotates the ball movement that we've done in our first two exercise movements, you will see that I'm using just a stick like this, a rattan stick. In some Tai Chi styles, they call it a Tai Chi ruler, um, and it has a number of different applications of, of itself and of its own. We won't go into that. But it's a practice just to getting used to the line rotates balls concept. We'll look at this. And from here, 
You'll see I'm keeping it in the center of the palms, which the energy points are, and I'm rotating that stick. So we're getting that sort of same movement, if you can see it, within the stick. And it's just nice and easy. Okay? And that's just using the small stick. Another me method is very simply a ball. It can be one of those uh, simple balls, kids' balls you can find in most of the uh, department stores. It doesn't have to be huge. If you want to do a huge movement, well, you buy obviously a bigger ball. But um, it doesn't have to be heavy. A lot of people say you should have oh, a big iron ball or a big wooden ball to do this exercise. But that defeats the purpose because that's working muscle groups more than relaxation. And we're really after relaxation as a driving force behind your whole exercise routine. So with the ball in hand, we start like this. So it's almost like you're rotating the ball. And you can do this on a table too with just the one hand and have the uh, table there as you rotate the ball as well. But this is it, the basic same concept as you can see that we did with the stick, that we did with everything else. And you can see I'm going around this way. So I'm going there, bring it back this way. Or I can just do the line, rotate the ball, sensation movement, like so. Okay, continuing on that line, rotate the ball exercise. Now we're going to look at the use of a rattan or bamboo wooden hoop. Now you can get the steel hoops to various weights, various sizes, the same as with these, um, but they negate the concept of the exercise, which is to learn fluid, relaxed movement, protecting your center line, while also coming from your center line. In my crane, or in traditional crane fist law, or hall fa, the idea is everything comes from the center, and returns to the center. So we take the hoop, and some people say best to use the rattan or the bamboo, as it fits more with the Taoist philosophy of nature, uh, of which the crane law system is a Taoist or Taoist martial arts system. So we take that hoop, both hands go in, and this is the area of circumference that we're actually concentrating on. So we're in this position here, and I'm simply just going to go down into a stance, and you can see I'm rotating that ball, okay? Very nice movement. There are other exercises, of course, that you can do with the hoop, but for this particular aspect, we're looking at the rotate the ball, or the line rotates the ball exercise. And that's just some of the methods you can do to enhance or take those exercises that we're giving you further. Okay, now we're going to look at the third exercise in the series of special exercises we use in White Crane Law. Um, we've had the arms side to side, we've had the line rotates the ball, and now we're going to look into the uh, crane wings or flapping crane wings movement. Very simply, I like a little bit bigger stance for this one, by the way, so you can really get that action going. But the concept is on a base level, the arms start up, shoulder height, come down in front of the body, right arm in front of left, left arm in front of right, and continue. Okay, and that's just the basic aspect. And you can keep the arms really relaxed. But if you want to get more internal and put more of the body movement into it, then we get a sort of almost bouncing type movement into the exercise, which is done. And then you can swing as well. So you're moving your centre line. And again, you do a rep of five of those particular exercises. Okay, the next one is the flying wings. Um, and this 
has a strong connection to the uh, Ming Herchen or calling crane system because it's actually seen at the beginning of one of the forms of this style in that of the fourth form and that is the Zhuang Quan or the middle gate, middle gate say protect. So it starts here, hands out in front, you're going to bring turn the hands over so the palms face upwards going to bring them back towards your own hips circle them in like you're going like that circling them back around your body bringing them right around to the hands striking this position and again and again and you can see how I'm going up and down so I'm not only using my hands and getting that nice upper body stretch but I'm also working into the legs. Now you can do these exercises really slow. All of the, the exercises can be done as slow as this in a controlled manner so it really gives you a very good workout in very few movements. Or you can do it a little bit faster and more vigorous, say it's winter, you want to get the body warmed up quicker, so forth. Then you can do it a little bit more uh, vigorous if you wish. But for me personally, to do the exercises at a very slow or medium speed is more important because you get to feel and internalize the feeling of all the different muscles and tendons and joints and so forth moving. So it makes you more aware of your body, more aware of what you're doing with that movement and if you're more body movement aware then you become a better practitioner. In Chinese way cranium or Hua, we call this body awareness is one term or body energy systems or body energy understanding or shan fa. Okay? So from here again the concept is in out back and now you can really start using the whole body if you wish push your breathing Brute movements are going forward and away are out movements coming in you breathe in like so this is the flying wings again don't forget that you can do each of these movements in the way that most suits you and your own body type Okay, the next one is called the scholar chops wood or the woodman chops wood. Kind of self-explanatory. So we take up just a nice easy position. You're going to bring the hands up over your head and you're going to have them about a good hand's width apart so that you're using this area here, the sword blade or the sword hand. Imagine you've got a, uh, a Chinese doll in your hand or a Chinese broadsword and you're chopping with that. So in this case you have double uh, Chinese dial. From here the concept is very simple. You're going to go down to the right, back up, to the left, back up and then right down between the legs and start the whole sequence again. Relaxed, Relaxed, relax. Now there are another version of this exercise, or there is another version of this exercise I'll show you, and that's just chopping from side to side. So we negate the one in the middle. And it's just one, two, three, four, five. Then you go high. One, two, three, four, five. So you can see from that. One exercise becomes basically an interpretation of three different ways of moving the body and getting those joints flowing. And that's very important. Okay, the next one is called circle waist. Simple as. Feet apart, knees bent, hands on your hips, just sink into your waist a little bit. Okay, you can leave your hands on your hips, you put one hand in front of the other, whatever. Or you can just bring your hands into this position, which is the God palms or the God shakes wings, 
or God hands as I call them, or as they are called in traditional white cream fist. And we just, from there, ready, and we tote into the hips, deep into the hips. Now I advocate you do this slowly, okay? And change direction. So you might do three or four in one direction, and then change. Now of course you can start off small like this, or you can make them in a really big style of movement, okay? But the importance is that you focus on this belt here, the pelvic girl area, and you're releasing the tension in the upper and lower abdominals, the serratus, of course, to the side, and you're also working into the hip region, into the piriformis muscle, and the gluteus maximus, okay, coming into the quadriceps, the biceps femoris, uh, the gastrocnemius, which is your calf muscles and so forth. So you're getting a pretty good workout overall. In terms of fighting, the movement of the hips is very important because energy comes from the ground, it's brought up into the hips and then expressed out through the extremities. So the hips are a connection or a starting point for the main energy. So you turn the keys on in the toes the power runs up into the hips, which is the engine, and from the engine out into the extremities, i.e. the tyres moving forward or backwards or whatever. Okay? And that's one way of looking at the importance of this Dantian or Yal Dai, uh, or Kwa point in the hip region. Okay, so we've got that. Now we're going to do the double lotus legs. So from here, just a nice relaxed position. And what you're going to do, you can bring your hands up into a guard position, which I like, or you can be lazy and drop your hands down here. Either way is fine by me because it's up to you to suit your own body type. Okay? So, but what we're going to do is call it an outside lotus kick. Now, an outside lotus kick is like an outside crescent kick or a mita zuke geri in karate. But the idea with the, our particular outside lotus kick or outside crescent, if you wish to call it that, is it smaller, not as well pronounced as the karate uh, styles, and it uses the outer edge and the outer top edge of the foot. So we're striking with either this area or this area here. So the whole area there. And that's simply done like this. One, two, three, four, five, Six. And you can see it's done nice and easy. Not forced, not pushed, not straining. You can do it shorter if you wish. One, two, three, four. Depending on where you are, what you're trying to work in the body. Also combatively, it's probably easy to strike shorter into the lower legs using it this way. Or if you're coming up into the rib cage area or the kidney area or whatever, then obviously you can go a lot higher into your techniques. So it just depends on you. But it is a really good technique and uh, makes up part of our kicking routine as well. Okay, the next one is rise the legs to the side, or rise the legs or knees to the side. Now don't cheat with this. Don't make your hands come down to your knees, make your knees come up to your hands. You put your hands up shoulder height, bring them in a little bit so the shoulders are relaxed, the wrists are relaxed. And all you're going to do is just take a decent position. It doesn't have to be that deep. But I like to get a little bit more spring so I go a little bit more deeply. But what I want you to do is simply knee up, knee up, knee up, knee up, knee up, knee up. Okay? Very good exercise for working the lower abdominals, opening up the piriformis around the hips, the gluteus maximus, quads, biceps femoris, salatus anterior, which is one of the main muscles that stops you from doing any of the really hard or high kicking techniques. So you need to loosen all that area up. Very, very important. Okay, the last one we're going to do is called wandering crane hands. 
and it actually comes from an element of the Hofa text, which some people call the Wubeji, or which others are quite mistaken about, is the so-called Karate Bible, the Bubishi, which was only ever really given the name Bubishi back in about 1931-32. So, so uh, it's not really that old of a text in terms of the Arate, or the Japanese Okinawan sense of the word. The original text isn't called Bubishi, isn't called Wubeji, it's just called Hofa, meaning Crane Law, which means it encompasses all accesses, all points, all aspects of the actual Crane Art. And the Lohan or Lohan and the incense shop boxy that is contained. It's actually said in the pages of this particular text that Lohan or Monkfist or incense shop boxing and white crane are one and the same. Okay, and that's a very interesting point to note. Okay, so what we're going to do now with this one is very very simple. I'll take up a stance, and it's a bit sort of Bruce Lee-ish looking, to be honest. Um, you put your hands out in front, into a fighting position, a bit extended, or you, much later on you can come back in here, more into a fighting application, but we'll just do it out here for the sake of the exercise. And what you do is you go one, two, one, two. So you bring the palms in, like so. And then you can start putting your body into the motion. Then you can go out and the same sort of thing. And you can bring your body more into the ocean, the, uh, ocean which is probably a good analogy. It's like water crashing on a beach or into the motion. Okay? Once you get a bit better at it, and you start looking at everything from a more combative or application sense, then from here, the movement's coming very short to the body. So it's one, two, three, like so, we're out. Okay? It also is done with a free step. So in a fighting application, let's say you're in here, holding your hands up in a god, a hands position, and you're trying to defend yourself. You see an opening and you want to go in with a free type of strike, or one opening, one clear, one strike, whatever it may be, then it's like so. You can also go backwards with it as well. So you can see that sort of free step happening. So you're here, like that, and going forward with the footwork or coordinating it with your footwork. Okay, very good. And that concludes all of the exercises that we do in terms of getting the body ready for traditional white crane practice. Other exercises I recommend are stretches, um, the PNF system of stretching, which is known as the uh, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation of the uh, stretching means, um, which is a technique where you would take up a position, hold that position for a count of say 15 seconds, relax, for a count of 10 to 15 seconds and then take your legs a little bit further and repeat and repeat and repeat. It's one of the best stretching methods you can do. Don't bounce when you stretch. I uh, recently watched a, um, an interesting video of a particular monk, Chinese Shaolin monk, like they're everywhere, and, um, <laughs> and it was really interesting because all he was doing was bounce, 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 bounce. And all that does is take your muscles and break and tear. And when muscle breaks and tear, it will grow back as what is called scar tissue. And as it grows back, as is the keloid or scar tissue, it actually lessens the amount of flexibility you have. Best sort of uh, flexibility exercise I find apart from the leg ones we've done here is like a, uh, a front leg raise, 
a side leg raise, a back leg raise, they're all good. Going into a low forward stance, going into a low leaning stance, etc. They're also good. But one of the best stretching exercises I know of for the entire body is the simple cat stretch, uh, which we'll show in other videos as we go along. Okay? Thank you again for watching. I hope you get something of value out of this. And as with any video I do, if you have any questions, please email me and I'll be happy to talk to you and we can take this discussion and learning further. Thank you.